What does it mean to be spirit-filled? We see the Holy Spirit mentioned over 20 times in seven chapters in the book of Acts. And we also see the phrase filled with the spirit or spirit-filled six times. The Holy Spirit of God is the person of God living inside of every Christian, and he is worthy of our attention. In the book of Acts, the Holy Spirit worked through these first Christians to carry out the mission of God, and they do it in a way that they set an incredible example for us as Christians and individuals that we too need to be filled with the Spirit and live on mission for God. Welcome back to another video. This day is a little different than other film days because it is a rest day for me as a homemaker. I like to take Sundays off from my usual duties and spend quality time with my family. We usually play games or cuddle up with a blanket on the couch and watch a movie. And I typically cook a cozy meal for everyone and prepare the table in an unusual way. Since it is Sunday, I personally like to make the day we worship God special around the table with some added flowers and candles. And today is just a day of rest where I choose to forfeit some of the main mundane tasks like making the beds, folding laundry, and washing dishes in order to nurture my relationship with my husband and children. So in the book of Acts in chapter 1, Luke is writing to someone named Theophilus, and it says, The first account I composed, Theophilus, about all that Jesus began to do and teach, until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after he had given orders by the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. To these he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over a period of 40 days and speaking things regarding the kingdom of heaven. Gathering them together, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but wait for what the Father had promised, which he said, You heard of from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. The main message that Jesus is saying here is that I have some really big work for you, but don't go home yet. Don't leave Jerusalem. Stay together and wait because I'm going to give you something I promised before. Jesus promised to give them the Holy Spirit all the way back to the ministry of John the Baptist three years prior. So here I am making some buttermilk biscuits for breakfast. They are so delicious and so simple with only seven ingredients you probably already have in your pantry. I will be sure to leave the recipe in the description below. The only thing I would change next time is the thickness. I rolled mine out a little over a fourth inch thick thinking that they would rise more. And next time I would definitely roll them maybe a half inch thick. Other than that, they were perfect and I enjoyed getting my hands in some dough so early in the morning. I find working with dough extremely therapeutic. So Jesus is saying, wait for me to give you this gift that you are going to need for all the things lying ahead. And what he is saying is, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you are going to receive power and my presence like you have never seen before. This was not a worldly power though. It's not like a typical superhero power we think of. That's not the type of power we see them carry out through the book of Acts. It's more of a spiritual and sustaining power that helped them accomplish the things God needed for them to do. 
You see Christians and apostles do open air preaching. Churches are being planted all over the known world. People that receive the gospel with just weeping and joy and have their lives completely transformed. And then you see riots break out from people who are full of anger. Christians were arrested, persecuted, taken before the council and beaten and even killed. We see demons cast out and people are healed. And if we think about it, it would be really hard to not have some sort of sustaining power to make it through all of that. Jesus gave them his power and he desired to give us that same power. It's such a mystery that God lives inside of us and his power is seen in us and through us. We see the people of Acts in some of the most vulnerable situations that they could ever find themselves in. We see people who don't see themselves as worthy or capable, and we see God's power moving through them in spite of their human weaknesses. 2 Corinthians 12, 9, this verse is so beautiful. It says, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee and my strength is made perfect in weakness. Oh, just think about that for a second. Like just sit with that verse. Our weakness and God's power work together how many of you have found yourself in a situation without hope but you experienced god's power in your life god's power is seen best through vulnerability sacrifice and submission not the earthly strength and positions of power but through weakness and what we do with God's power is we live in mission. Acts chapter 1 verse 6 says, So when they had come together, they began asking him, saying, Lord, is it at this time that you are restoring the kingdom to Israel? But he said to them, It is not for you to know periods of time or appointed times which the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria and as far is the remotest part of the earth. He gives us his power so we can be his witnesses. We are to be witnesses about what God has done for us. And this goes all the way back to his word when he says, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will be my witnesses. So here I am making a gorgeous instant pot eggplant pasta. It's so simple. And if you're anything like me and your instant pot is just kind of collecting dust, then this is the recipe to get you back into using it. All you do is throw all the ingredients into the instant pot, give it a good stir, and then cook it on high pressure for seven minutes and then pressure release after 10 minutes. After that, you just top it with some fresh mozzarella and breadcrumbs and then pop it into the oven on broil for three minutes. I'll also have this dish in the description below. The Holy Spirit doesn't really want a lot of attention. The Holy Spirit is there to draw people's attention to Jesus. The Holy Spirit always points to Christ. It doesn't exist to do tricks for our entertainment, and it's not meant to be just an emotional high. There are some special times in your life when the Holy Spirit will come upon you and things will be accomplished through you and in you. I remember when I first opened my heart to the idea of Christ and 
I was so ashamed and even scared to talk about it. I was hiding it from everyone I knew and secretly reading the Bible because I didn't want them to know and judge me. And now looking back, there is absolutely no way that I would have the boldness that I do now to share with anyone and everyone the goodness of God without the help of the Holy Spirit. And I know I've said this before, but do not be afraid to share your testimony and give witness to Christ. You never know when that will lead someone to be saved. Ask God to give you boldness. Ask God what you can give up for him and start doing in his name. If you begin to live on mission for God, you will start to experience the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Thank you so, so much for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video, please hit the subscribe button, like, comment your thoughts, and share with a friend who might need this message today. This encourages me to make more godly content for you. My name is Anna, and I curate biblically sound videos for women to advocate for Jesus and the beauty of traditional homemaking.